London is the heart of the United Kingdom. It has a population of 9.5 million people and is the country's economic and administrative capital. To keep the metropolis functioning smoothly, underneath its bustling city streets is the world-famous London Underground. First opened in 1863, it has expanded to 11 lines that service 272 stations, quickly transporting commuters across the metro area. Feeding into this network are many other larger national rail lines. Two of these are the Great Eastern Main Line, which runs from Norwich to Liverpool Street Station, and the Great Western Main Line, which runs from Bristol to Paddington. The two lines, which are separated by only 6.5 kilometers, are largely detached from the rest of London's rail system. Commuters arriving at Paddington and Liverpool Street must disembark and get on either the Circle or Hammersmith and City lines to get closer to the city center. To solve this inefficiency, for decades, dreamers have imagined a new rail line between Paddington and Liverpool Street connecting the east and west. The idea was first proposed in the wake of the London Blitz on June 14, 1941, by railwayman George Dow in the London Star newspaper. In the 1974 London Rail Study report, the term crossrail emerged for two proposed rail lines across London. Then, in the 1989 Central London Rail Study, a series of crossrail projects were imagined. In 1991, London Underground and British Rail submitted a private bill to Parliament for a new line between Paddington and Liverpool Street. However, in 1994, the private bill committee rejected it. Still though, the idea had wide support, and in 2001, the Department for Transportation and Transport for London formed a joint venture called Cross London Rail Links to develop and promote the Crossrail scheme. Over the coming years, it developed and promoted its plan, which it submitted to Parliament in 2005. Three years later, the project received royal assent and was passed in Parliament as the Crossrail Act of 2008, officially authorizing construction. The Crossrail project involves creating a new underground train line between Paddington, Liverpool Street, and beyond. The project's main feature is 21 kilometers of twin-bore tunnels underneath London. These tunnels are split into three major sections. The first is a 15.4 kilometer section from Royal Oak to Victoria Dock. Splitting off this is a 2.7 kilometer section which runs to Putting Mill Lane. Lastly, underneath the River Thames is a 2.6 kilometer tunnel that extends to Plumstead. These tunnels have a diameter of 6.2 meters compared to the 3.8 meters for the deep level trains on the Victoria Line. Along them, 50 kilometers of new tracks link the tunnels to the already existent tracks on the Great East and West Main Lines, while providing access all the way to Abbey Wood in East London. Lastly, 10 brand new stations, eight of which are underground, are situated along the route. Not only does Crossrail service downtown London, its line extends to Heathrow Airport, providing quicker and more affordable transport to the country's largest airport. Further out, the line integrates with the Great East and West Main Lines, running all the way from Shenfield in the east to Reading in the west. The project, with a total cost of £18.8 billion, is funded by a variety of sources in the UK, including the Department for Transportation, Network Rail, Transport for London, and local businesses. Crossrail is expected to dramatically improve London's transport network. It will increase its rail capacity by 10%, decreasing congestion and serving up to 200 million passengers a year. With quick limited stop trains, it will also drastically improve commute times across the city. Paddington to Canary Wharf will be cut from 30 to 16 minutes, and Liverpool Street to Heathrow will be cut from 55 to 32 minutes. And by extending far east and west, the new line will bring an extra 1.5 million people within 45 minutes of central London. This will create employment opportunities, connecting businesses in the city to the people they need outside of it. In total, these benefits will add an estimated £42 billion to the UK economy, while increasing London's standard of living. After being approved in 2008, Cross London Railings quickly awarded contracts to design and construction agencies. Then, in 2009, construction commenced, with preparatory works on the Canary Wharf and Tottenham Court stations. In May and August 2012, the first of the project's eight tunnel boring machines, nicknamed Phyllis and Ada, launched from Royal Oak towards Farringdon. A few months later, machines Elizabeth and Victoria launched from a shaft on Limo Peninsula towards the same destination. 
In January and May 2013, Machine Sophia and Mary launched from Plumstead towards North Woolwich across the Thames. And in August 2013 and February 2014, right as Phyllis and Ada were finishing their drives, Machines Jessica and Ellie launched from Putting Mill Lane towards Stepney Green. Only a few months later, they finished their drives, just as Sophia and Mary reached North Woolwich. Jessica and Ellie were then dismantled and quickly relocated to Limo Peninsula, where they relaunched towards Victoria Dock. They quickly finished in August and October 2014. For the next seven months, Elizabeth and Victoria continued progressing towards Farringdon until May 2015, when they finally broke through, finishing the tunnel boring process. While all this was happening, the Connaught Tunnel, a 550-meter-long disused rail tunnel built beneath the Royal Docks in 1878, was restored and enlarged for use on the Crossrail project. In addition, excavation and construction of the 10 new stations had started across London. With all the tunnels in place, 50 kilometers of new tracks were then laid down, along with power, lighting, and ventilation systems. On February 23, 2016, the Queen visited the under-construction Bond Street Station in Mayfair, and Crossrail's new line was officially named the Elizabeth Line in her honor. However, the project was behind schedule. Originally planned to open in December 2018, it had been pushed back numerous times due to delays. And with mounting cost pressures, its budget was increased from 14.8 to 18.8 billion pounds. Then, in March 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic completely halted the project. Fortunately, within several months, construction resumed, and by May 2021, trial running for the line had commenced. Meanwhile, the new stations began finishing up and preparing for commuter service. Finally, on May 23, 2022, after 13 years of construction, London cityscape turned purple in honor of the new line. The next day, all 10 stations except Bond Street, which is still under construction, opened to the public, and service between Paddington and Abbey Wood began. Before we continue, let me introduce this video's sponsor, Masterworks. With so much uncertainty in the current stock market, investors are looking to alternative assets for wealth protection and portfolio diversification. Of these alternative assets, one of the most exciting is contemporary art. The contemporary art market is up 32% year over year and has outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% over the past 25 years. The Wall Street Journal has called it one of the hottest markets in the world, and one of the world's top CIOs said that if given $10,000 in a five-year investment outlook, he would put his money into fine art. On Masterworks, the world's premier art investing platform, you can invest in shares of multi-million dollar art pieces. So far, Masterworks has accumulated over 500,000 clients, has invested over $500 million, and returned 25% net IRR for the past four years in a row. To check out this incredible platform, take advantage of a special deal. By clicking the link in the description, you can skip the waitlist for Masterworks and join right now, investing in fine art within just a few clicks. Now, back to the video. The construction of the Elizabeth Line was an enormous undertaking. At peak construction, the project employed 10,000 people, making it the largest infrastructure project in Europe. The boring process used over 200,000 concrete segments and excavated over 7 million tons of earth. 99% of this was used for landfill restoration projects around London, including a 1,500-acre wetland bird habitat on Wallasey Island in Essex. In addition, the project undertook one of the most extensive archaeology programs in UK history. While most of the tunnels were too deep to disturb archaeology, whenever they or the stations rose close to the surface, a unique opportunity to explore London's past was presented. At Canary Wharf, part of a woolly mammoth jawbone and a 55-million-year-old piece of amber were uncovered. At Charterhouse Square, 11 victims of the Black Death were found, and at Stepney Green, remains of a 15th-century manor house were uncovered. At Liverpool Street Station, over 3,000 skeletons were unearthed from Bedlam Burial Ground, including victims of the Great Plague. Further down, many ancient Roman artifacts were discovered, including horseshoes, a shackle, pots, coins, and a rare bronze medallion. Lastly, in North Woolwich and Moorfields, 8,000-year-old flint tools were found along with 15th century ice skates, cutlery, coins, and dress accessories. So much was unearthed that in 2017, the Museum of London presented a special crossrail exhibit with all of the project's finds.
While delayed and over budget, the Elizabeth Line is truly a magnificent addition to the London Underground. With wider tunnels, the line carries the new Class 345 Aventra train carriages, which are more spacious and modern than typical tube trains. In addition, the 10 new Elizabeth Line stations have clean, modern designs. The Canary Wharf station sits underwater and has three tiers of retail space above it with a rooftop park. At Farringdon, the ticket hall is inspired by the industrial heritage of metal workers and jewelry makers in the area, along with the brutalist architecture of the nearby Barbican. At Tottenham Court, the station features granite, black glass, and stainless steel, creating a dark and cinematic atmosphere that reflects neighboring Soho's vibrant nightlife. At Whitechapel, the station sweeps over the train lines, serving as a bridge to connect the local communities. And at Paddington, the station has a large glass canopy and a grid-shaped recessed ceiling inspired by the works of Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The other stations also share a modern, sleek, and open design, developing a common theme across the Elizabeth line. Not only do they look good, they feature top-class technology. The stations share 18 ventilation shafts between them, which cool the stations and can quickly remove any smoke in the case of a fire. And along the platforms, three kilometers of screen doors prevent people from falling and isolate the platforms from dust on the tracks, keeping them clean. Unsurprisingly, the line, with its fast, modern, and spacious infrastructure, is a new favorite of London residents. It gives another route uh, from east to west London, pulls a lot of traffic off the super busy central line. Just a lot better transportation throughout the city, uh, a lot better air conditioning and heating, which is great when it's hot, and overall it's very nice. Still though, the project is not completely finished. Currently, the Elizabeth Line only runs between Paddington and Abbey Wood and is closed on Sundays. However, in late 2022, service to Reading, Shenfield, and Heathrow are expected to commence. And in early 2023, the line is planned to become fully operational, with 24 trains running per hour in the central section. Already, planners are looking past this. Expansions to Gravesend and Staines have been proposed, and Transport for London has even begun work on Crossrail 2 a similar project that would traverse London from north to south. In summary, Crossrail and its new Elizabeth Line have reshaped the London Underground, serving as a 21st century evolution to the world's oldest metro system.